This movie started out as a gift for my grandchildren. What do I know that, that might be helpful for them in their lives? Do we have a future? What kind of future? Can we learn to think and feel like a planet? What would get in the way? Glaciers are melting? Polar ice is melting? Sea levels are rising. Global warming is already happening. Politics seems defeated. And despair, denial and disinterest are well established. What might the planet say if it could speak? Welcome to this wet and windy, driverless planet, whirling through space. Safely on track for another gazillion years. Our home in the universe is a precious wonder. Our life together is a miracle. A life itself is a miracle. We are learning so much together. The language of the cosmos. Evolution and the language of life. A 
I'm a planet, but I'm also a, a blackbird singing. I'm a squirrel going up the tree, lightning fast. And I'm a dog enjoying the frost with its friends. I'm a tree coming into leaf. I'm spring flowers, but I'm also air learners coming into land and cities. and people. I like it when the sun comes out. It warms me up. I feel fed. Forests and fields and orchards and gardens dine on energy from the sun. Air and water, air, sun and soil They're partners in the task of flourishing. And when I flourish, surges of growth reach for the sky. And when I've done enough, my deaths feed everyone. It's been a very long, hard grind for so many seasons, for so many seasons. People trying to understand me talk about complexity theory and their dissipative structures. Hooray for that. But if you want to know me, I'm much more at home with wildernesses in both nature and civilization. I mean, forget about wilderness. As a, as a pristine place, untouched by humans. That's been a very nice story. But it's over. This is wilderness here. My crust is, is seething with wildernesses. Wilderness makes the split between nature and civilization obsolete. It was always a man-made story, but now it belongs in the history books. Millions of wildernesses, autonomous networks of, of growth and their decay, of, of flow and feedback, holding on to stability, resisting dissolution.
Cities constantly rebuilding themselves. A planetary graffiti of, of hives and nests and burrows. Wildernesses. The glass canyons of, of corporations. Real places with real algorithms and, and real air conditioning and real IT networks. They are also wildernesses. Casino finance. People getting high on Ponzi pyramids of risk management and uh, what can we get away with? Wildernesses. And coffee fueled offices, a throb with glances and smiles of, of mating display. The raunchy chat of desire. Wildernesses. Bodies are wildernesses. Bone and muscle, nerves and brains, thinking and feeling, empathy and Imagination? The lived delights and struggles of, of getting through the next day, the next week, the next season. All that's wilderness. Wilderness is uh, growth, partnership, symbiosis and cooperation, and competition, too. Families, vast constellations of, of, of caring, and delight, and disappointment and tears of joy for the newborn. They're wildernesses too. Men, men, men. They dig into me. They, they extract from me and, and, and refine me. They scratch and scrape and open huge sores on me. But just because I lie here being hacked about and mined and having my mountains moved, just because I seem to be tolerant of all of this, it doesn't mean I have no opinion. I feel invaded. You grow, you spread, you take what you want. And the whole earth is, is scarred by excavations like this. And my creatures are, are fleeing from them. Luxury like this comes at the price of extinctions. My animals, birds, fish and insects, they struggle to survive. The problem is mining, fishing, deforestation and agriculture. I remember when all this was forest. People cut the trees down to build ships and houses, to cook and keep warm, and to make charcoal. So much of me has been leveled and chemicaled and planted and harvested. Everybody needs to eat, but too much of this seems to be a way of growing money. It abuses me.
and I feel abused by these green coins. Irrigated fields. Where are the birds? Where are the butterflies? Where are the bees? Where are the buffaloes? People don't seem to realize that seizing me like this leads to seizure. Wildernesses and planets have ways of calling a halt. My ancient forests are being torn out of me and burning them is ruining my atmosphere. I don't like it. I don't want it. I won't have it. Expect blowback and die back. And huge storms. In these tiny moments of our history together, the human day in the sun could be coming to a close. For countless thousands of years, my wildernesses flourished through a mix of cooperation and competition. And then humans came along and they started to grow stuff. Crops, for instance. And then there were harvests. And to store them in their corners of me, villages were built. Now, when there was a surplus in these villages that could be uh, bought and sold, competition escalated into domination. Before long, uh, what I started to see was that agriculture didn't just domesticate and control animals and bits of wilderness. It also domesticated and controlled people. As time passed, cooperation seems to have faded and coercion and domination took over. And domination, once it's in place, has to be kept going. It has to be made to seem uh, natural and inevitable. Eventually I saw a few people becoming perpetrators of domination, but most people became victims, and some were both. I didn't like it. The perpetrators of domination were, and are, constantly being celebrated, as if they were wonderful. What is all this? And wherever there was domination, there was also violence. War is one of the poison fruits of domination. And alongside the millions who, who died in wars and conflict, millions of their wives and children carried the pain and loss 
through the years that followed. This is the price of domination. Lots of people tortured to death and murdered and enslaved. Their blood stained the ground of me too often and in too many places. And their, their suffering did me no harm that I couldn't survive. But today, the empires of domination have, have fused together. I feel overwhelmed. There have always been uh, people of the book, soldiers of righteousness, smiling cobras, architects of uh, arithmetic, and uh, divine calculators of power, power over. I've seen them come and go, and I watched with horror the capture of half the world. The Dominions, as they called them, mercilessly exploited. It faded. I was pleased. But then another empire took over. And before long, this full spectrum dominance was biting into me. And it hurt. when confronted with crisis. No, we endure, we overcome. We are America, second to none, and we own the finish line. Force, domination, violence, and its victims have come to seem natural and uh, inevitable. It seemed to me a story people had made up, powerful people telling themselves it was okay to be a tyrant. And domination has become domesticated. As play, as kids stuff. Even having fun with, with men with guns. and learning how to do domination has been domesticated as leisure brands. Don't be a loser. And similarly, fighting has been domesticated as health and fitness activities. Alongside this the domestication of women as inferior or inadequate persons continues. That this is also believed to be natural and inevitable still shapes human wildernesses everywhere. And the exploitation of women mirrors exactly the exploitation of the planet that I have to endure. It's been great to see women getting together to challenge domination, especially male domination. In some parts of the planet, I still see campaigners like these facing arrest and even execution. Resistance is essential because in too many of my wildernesses, they believe might is right. It's dog-eat-dog, dog, win-lose. Domination too often speaks the language of death. It, it fills the skies with, with planes like these. 
their instruments of threat and submission. And as I've seen too often, if you resist or try to evade the grasp of domination, it's likely to turn you into a target. Dominion tries to make reality what it has to be, what power insists it must be. And, and the violence of Dominion shuts down the heart. It terrorizes the timid. It breaks the will. It kills confidence and pulls the trigger for fight or flight, apathy and paralysis. I've seen so much suffering. This is me, a planet and a moon, a lot of rock and water and sunlight and growth. There's always been growth. Countless atoms and molecules and enzymes and cells and creatures that cooperated, competed and, and, and partnered with each other. That grew and, and flourished and, and died and, and became rock. Repeated countless million times. And for a very long time, there was enough of me for, for people and creatures, even though uh, some did better than others. But then a new kind of growth was discovered. People with surplus wealth began to rent it out, just as they would a horse or a house. They had learned how to grow money. And being able to grow money, apparently it's called capitalism, began to deliver luxury and uh, economic growth for the owners of capital. And what I saw was a big investment in ships and more and more piracy, slavery and wars. Land, captured or inherited, plus the surplus from crops and harvests. This was the basis of wealth. But the new technology of capital investment and profit changed that. Common land was taken over by the nobility so that they could invest in sheep. Forget about onions and beetroot. The new thing was sell wool, make a profit. Huge numbers of people who were dependent on the commons were made destitute. It continued with conquest and illegal theft. In the search for growth, whole countries and, and continents and, and the people in them were captured. The rich got richer. Across most of the planet, after only a few hundred years, the wildernesses of, of daily life now have capitalism as a religion. 
worshipping the god of economic growth. This is a religion with churches and cathedrals and popes and priests and congregations, all of them devoted to propagating faith in debt. And the church's business of renting out money. That is the opening bell on Wall Street. Will the Dow hit a record 22,000 today? Yes, yes, it will. Yes, I love that so question. Locally, capitalism may seem to be very logical and uh, reasonable. It's covered me with companies, corporations, and enterprises. Engines of growth, sprouting, flourishing, failing, and, and dying, just as forest wildernesses do. But with a big difference. Forest wildernesses grow when they need to and stop when it's enough. The wildernesses of capitalism don't know how to stop or even how to slow down. Worse, capitalism knows no limits. The scale and wealth of it is overwhelming me. There's no immune system. It's making me into a, a casino, constantly shifting between fear and greed. Capitalism is a species with, with no predators. And its grasp now reaches everywhere. And it doesn't seem to have noticed that uh, it's become obese. or worse. Capital can't stop growing because it has uncontrolled growth in its DNA. Interest, compound interest, return on investment. Even a planet can see that this presumes limitless space. Limitless energy, limitless resources. This is the physiology of cancer. Cancer needs increasingly vast amounts of nourishment, which means capital devours anything and everything of me it can dig up suck up or cut down but no matter how much capital takes from me it never seems to be enough new territories have to be found and capital has gradually turned to trafficking the whole of daily life putting the bodies and, and minds of, of the human wildernesses through a corporate mincer directly or indirectly serving the god of growth. Astonishing, incredible, and often deliciously entranced. But as these people buy stuff behind the products, out of sight, their needs are turning into profit. And yet another optic in growth. Rocks like these are a reminder of the, the millions of years of my story. Thousands of millions of years. Very long and 
and very slow. Then, in a tick of planet time, people began to draw on the rocks. They began to make maps of me. People settled into growing and harvesting food. And then, zip, snap, there came a great acceleration. Hundreds of years of, of techno speed up. Steam motors, electric motors, petrol and diesel motors, motors of all shapes and sizes. And equally suddenly it seemed to me there were huge numbers of people living in enormous cities. Half the world's people living in cities. Incredible wildernesses of streets and shops and traffic. And people foraging for food and necessities, like they did before there were cities or even villages. I've seen it all before, a, a long time ago. The only thing is that now, this is billions of people consuming huge amounts of stuff. And for this many people, the lamb chops, cheese and milk and meat need a lot of animals. It often seems to me that there are many times more of them than people. They all have to be fed. The scale of these human wildernesses is extraordinary. Food, shelter, work, travel, heating, entertainment, mortgages, mortgages. And, and meeting the needs of this many people seems to be down to a handful of big corporations. People call it the economy. Needs are fulfilled, needs are created, but only if capital grows. The global economy is, is enormous, and with each human generation, it seems to be doubling in size. I watched as, as the fingers of cities uh, reached out into the, the hills and valleys. Billions of people. People being born, eating, sleeping and dying. Plus billions of domesticated animals, birds and pets. countless wildernesses of, of, of family and work, throbbing with life, and all of them depending on energy. Energy, energy, energy. Switching on a light connects the carbonized sunshine of, of millions and millions of years of my forests. These lights and the life that they support are sucking dry and, and emptying 
countless cubic meters of the earth, of me, and putting the carbon from them into the atmosphere. These emissions upset the balance between sun's heat coming in onto me and excess heat going back out. It's a message written on the sky every day, but it's ignored. And people seem to think that my ability to, to receive in their digest waste has no limits. It's capitalism that has no limits, that has to grow. And it's proved to be very good at filling me up with smart, efficient luxury. Capital issues such a seductive invitation. 